بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين استعانة has uh, different forms or types and there's six six forms of istiana the first form of istiana is appealing for assistance and aid from Allah with the conditions and pillars and there's four pillars to it complete humility to Allah istiana with complete humility to Allah istiana with complete submission to Allah istiana with complete tawakkul on Allah meaning reliance on Allah and trust in one's affairs to Allah and isti'ana with complete certainty in Allah meaning one is certain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for him and having confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the type if you direct it to other than Allah it's major shirk and it can only be directed to Allah this category this form can only be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This type of isti'ana is the meaning of the hawqala. Hawqala in Arabic is the word refer, referring to la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There's no might nor power except in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can attain benefits and save himself from harm or be aided in any matter, deen or dunya, except through isti'ana in Allah. So this category is a definition to the hawqala, which is la hawla wa la quwwata illa, bil, illa, illa billah. You need isti'ana in Allah in everything, whether it may be doing the ordains, or whether it may be uh, isti'ana in Allah and leaving the prohibitions, or whether it may be in patience during the trials of this life, you need isti'ana not just in this life, you need isti'ana in the life after and in the grave and on the judgment day. No one will assist you with anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever seeks the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will aid him. This is why you may know, now know why we must say as a fard from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ 17 times by fard in our salah. إِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ you alone we worship and you alone we appeal for aid. This is the first form of isti'ana. The second form of isti'ana is isti'ana or seeking help in a creation, in something which he is capable of helping you in. Isti'ana, or seeking help from a creation, from a person, in something he is capable of helping you in. This matter depends on the action that is sought. It depends on the action that is sought. Is it halal or is it haram? If, the, if, if someone seeks isti'ana in another, in a matter that is halal, then it's permissible for him to do that. And the one who's being asked will get reward for responding and helping. For example, someone is moving and he says, brother, can you help me in uh, moving my furniture? Or uh, when you came to the dars today, uh, you ask a brother, can we carpool to the dars? Allah said, al birri wa taqwa. Seek assistance with one another upon righteous actions. وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى That's the Surah Al-Ma'idah. There's another one. وَأَحْسِنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهِ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Do good. Uh, indeed, Allah loves those who do good. And that one is in Surah Al-Baqarah. That's if it's halal. That's if it's halal. What about if the matter you seek isti'ana in is haram? If the matter you seek an isti'ana in is a haram issue, then it's forbidden for the one asking, seeking isti'ana to ask. And it's forbidden for the one who is asked to even help. That's for example... Like someone uh, being asked to uh, hand or bring or buy a cup or a can or a bottle of alcohol. Or for example, one asking another one to go and co-sign for a, a RIBA contract or to witness in it or to drive him to that or to drive him to any sin, transport him to any sin. That is haram. That is, what's the proof on that? The verse that I just mentioned. وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا إِنْ سُوتُ الْمَائِدَةِ وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ 
Do not assist one another in prohibitions and sins and transgression. You, it's by the clear verse. That's the second form of isti'ana. The third form of isti'ana or seeking help is seeking the help from a creation who is alive and present. But it's something he can't do and it's beyond his ability and means. It's something he can't do. It's beyond his ability and means. That's not shirk. That's not shirk, but it's what you would say, it's useless talk or futile talk, but it's not shirk. Why is it not shirk? Why is it not shirk? It's not shirk for two reasons. Number one, because you're actually speaking to a person. You, there's a human being there, you're saying, hand me this or give me that. He's not able to do it, but you're actually speaking to a person. The second reason is, it's the matter you're asking him is not among those that are hidden or unseen. That's why it's not shirk. An example, if you tell a child or older person or a paralyzed person uh, who can't carry something heavy, help me carry uh, this big box. That's not shirk. It, why we mention this? Because we need to know. We can't go around declaring people mushrikeen, and you would hear this at times. That's not shirk. But if the matter you're asking him is something that's hidden or unseen, that leads us to the next category, the fourth category. And the fourth category is best described as A and B. A and B is seeking isti'ana, seeking aid in someone that's deceased, a deceased person. That's A. B is seeking the aid of someone that's living in matters they cannot do or reach and that those matters are considered among the hidden and unseen. This type of seeking helping is major shirk. Major shirk. Why? Because this can only be done by someone who believes that he sought help from someone who has hidden control over the creation which only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. Very simple and basic stuff. The fifth one, the fifth type of isti'ana or seeking help, seek an aid in something one can do and is able to do. You're seeking some aid from someone who's able to do something with reliance on him. With reliance on him. Note here, we added the keyword reliance on that person. That word can throw you off. That's actually the only difference between this fifth category and the second category. Look up in your notes. In the second category, we said seeking help in a creation in something which he is capable of helping in. We said that's permissible. Here, if you add the reliance factor, the keyword reliance, reliance on that person, like seeking the help of a doctor, isti'ana in a doctor, with reliance on that doctor, seeking isti'ana in a lawyer, with reliance on him, that's minor shirk, minor shirk. It becomes minor shirk if there is reliance on the creation in that which they can do. And one of the ways to check your, uh, the status of your reliance is by seeing if your heart feels so assured and firm that that person or individual has the full solution. It's in him and it's in his hands and control. The final category is seeking help in deeds. Isti'ana in deeds. What we mean is seeking help by performing and turning to Allah in deeds, through deeds. Deeds that are beloved to Allah. Seeking help by, for example, performing salah when in need. Seeking help by being patient throughout your life because patience is a ibadah. When it's, the intention is there, patience is a worship in itself. Uh, seeking help in uh, deeds to attain Allah's help. The ruling on this one, on this category or form, is that this is something that's prescribed by Allah. It's permitted, it's recommended by Allah. Allah said, Ya subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, istainu bis sabri wa salah. 
Seek assistance through your patience and prayer. That's in Surah Al-Baqarah. Ibn Al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, in Uddat Al-Sabirin said, Allah directed his servants to turn to salah and patience for aid in matters of this life and the matters of the hereafter. Ahmad, Imam Ahmad in Abu Dawood uh, narrated that Hudayfa radiallahu anh said, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا حزبه أمر صلى كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا حزبه أمر صلى Pay attention to that hadith. In Aoun al-Ma'bud, the author said, Hazabahu, the key word in the hadith is hazabahu. It means when he was afflicted with a calamity or stress or sorrow or grief or worry or distress, all that falls under the word of hazabahu. When he was afflicted with that, sallallahu alayhi wa he would turn to salah. Try it and you will see relief. Try this, try this ibadah. Try this abandoned ibadah. If you were to analyze the non-obligatory nafil or sunnah salahs, among the most popular salah you will see is istikhara. Among the most popular ones is istikhara. It's one of the most that I get questions on. It's the, one of the most that you hear people doing. When Muslims have a decision like an engagement or a marriage or a divorce or buying a house or moving or other matters, they hasten to do salah, uh, salat al-istikhara. It's very widespread and very popular. A salah, just as important, Maybe even more important that you rarely see anyone doing illa man rahim Allah, yet it's needed and essential is the salah of one in a difficulty or distress. Revive that sunnah. Revive that sunnah and look what you'll get out of it. You'll get the reward of reviving the sunnah of one who is in distress or grief. On top of that, you'll get your normal reward for doing that salah. And on top of that, you'll get the enhancement of being relieved from the issue or matter that you're facing. When a brother or sister gets an anxiety attack or stress, or they're expecting a hardship, or they're facing a hardship, or they anticipate, for example, bad news, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save you from all that at home or at work. Head to those two rak'ahs. Pray those two rak'ahs. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah said, Salah is the biggest aider for firmness in all matters. Ibn, uh, Ibn Hajar rahimahullah in the first volume of Fath al-Bari said, It's sunnah to hasten to salah if one anticipates that something evil may happen to him. It's sunnah to head to salah and hasten to salah if he anticipates something evil. Ibn Jarir narrated that Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu was walking one day and they told him your brother had just died. They broke the news to him that his brother died. So he said, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Then he immediately stepped to the side of the road that he was on and he began to make salah. Then he returned to his camel saying, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Seek help. In patience and in salah. In uh, Al-Furu' ibn al-Muflih, Al-Ajuri, and others, it was actually uh, other than him too, uh, they said, when one is in aff afflicted, let them turn to salah. One of the critical, the most critical times, one of the most critical times, during the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life, was in Badr. Look at the critical timing in the critical situation. A defeat in that battle means the extinction of Islam. He said that in his dua. If you don't give my people victory, you will not be worshipped on this earth. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. After he sallallahu alayhi wasallam aligned the roles, after he aligned the roles for the battle and it was about to begin, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam headed to salah. Ibn Mas'ud said, لَمَّا الْتَقَيْنَا يَوْمَ بَدْرِ قَامَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ يُصَلِّي And then after his salah, he made dua. The dua that you know where Abu Bakr was held in his upper garment for him. In another hadith in Musnad Ahmad, Ali رضي الله عنه said, there was not a single one of us except who went to sleep the night before the battle of Badr. Except the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم who was up all night making salah and crying and pleading with Allah. By the tree until the morning broke. Imam Ahmad fi Musnad an Ali 
في يوم بدر قال علي قال لقد رأيتنا وما فينا إلا نائم إلا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تحت شجرة يصلي ويبكي حتى أصبح One thing I wanted to know is that some claim that this salah is a bid'a salah it's bid'a to do it and uh, this is because the reason they say that is because they found a portion of the hadith on this matter and not the other or when they were asked they neglected the other part for some reason uh, there are some weak hadith on this matter that have a specific dua attached to it meaning if one is in distress, this is how the weak hadith goes. If one is in distress, let him make two rak'at. And then the supposed weak hadith, the, 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 weak, the weak hadith says, uh, uh, make this specific dua. Uh, those hadith with the specific dua attached to them about salat al-haja of the salat of the one in distress are weak. For example, one of those is, من كانت له حاجة إلى الله وإلى أحد من خلقه فليتوضأ وليصلي ركعتين ثم ليقول. The weak hadith says whoever has a need let him go or is in distress let him go make wudu and pray two rak'ahs and say the following and say the following لا إله إلا الله الحليم الكريم لا لا إله إلا الله الحليم الكريم سبحان الله رب العرش العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم إني أسألك موجبات رحمتك. That's in Ibn Majah. And it termidi and al hakim and it's very weak. That's a very weak hadith that I just mentioned. What happened is some, and why I mentioned it is because I've seen and read it for some talabat al ilm that uh, they seen that this is weak and then they cancelled out all the the prayer of distress altogether. To be clear, what's weak is the hadith that's saying if you're afflicted in a matter, go make wudu, pray, and then make the specific du'a. The ones with the specific dua are weak. That's the one that's weak. What's not weak in the hadith and what's in fact sunnah as recommended not only by a hadith actually but by verses in the Quran and by a hadith and by statements of the salaf. What's sunnah and documented by all that is the general salah of one in distress with no specific dua. When in distress, when anything bothers you, when you're facing anything in life, anything, head to salah. Head to salah and make dua. Unlike uh, salat al-istikhara that has a specific dua attached to it, there's no authentic dua that's attached to the salah of the one in distress. Just head to salah and spill your heart out to Allah in any dua that comes to your tongue and pray and plead and beg and ask Allah and do isti'ana in Allah and you will see Allah support to you. Two verses in the Quran support this ibadah. Two verses in Surah Al-Baqarah. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bil sabri was salat. Was ta'inu bil sabri was salat. Twice in Surah Al-Baqarah. Seek help in patience and in salah. Seek your aid, isti'ana, in your patience in your salah. How is salah a comfort and support? How is it a comfort and support? Salah is a connection to Allah. It's a connection. When your connection or bond with Allah is strong, Allah's support for you will be stronger. And if Allah supports you, your matters all will turn into ease. And that's how your salah is an aid to you and support to you. And it's an isti'ana. Uh, I don't want to get off topic too much, but these are matters that one needs on a daily basis. In life, you're, this is the rule of life. You're either afflicted or you're waiting for affliction. There's no dodge in that rule. If you're not afflicted, don't get happy because affliction is a fact of life. Trials are a fact of life. Now let me add, uh, in that specific salah, there's, like I said, there's no authentic hadith with a specific dua attached to it. However, there is a dua that's uh, authentic that has nothing to do with the salah of the distress. But it's something you can seek isti'ana in as well. In Sahih Muslim, 
Ibn Abbas said, when the Messenger وسلم, was afflicted with a matter and used the same word that I mentioned earlier, حزبه. كان إذا حزبه أمر قال كان إذا حزبه أمر قال لا إله إلا الله العظيم الحليم لا إله إلا الله رب العرش الكريم لا إله إلا الله رب العرش العظيم لا إله إلا الله رب السماوات ورب الأرض ورب العرش الكريم نعم You should have had your phone recording here. Um, or next time, uh, please get it from one of the brothers. Or after class, you know, we answer questions. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and protect you. Uh, that's just to save time during class because, you know, every minute here counts. And it's easier for the brothers recording so they can upload it quickly. Uh, but I will repeat it, inshallah, this time. Uh, the hadith is uh, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was afflicted with a matter uh, and it starts off just like the Salah كَانَ إِذَا حَزَبَهُ حَزَبَهُ means a matter afflicted like I said it's sadness, calamity, calamity, anything the first one is on Salah but this is a dua when a matter afflicted he will say لا إله إلا الله العظيم الحليم لا إله إلا الله العظيم الحليم لا إله إلا الله رب العرش الكريم لا إله إلا الله رب العرش الكريم لا إله إلا الله رب العرش العظيم لا إله إلا الله رب العرش العظيم لا إله إلا الله رب السماوات ورب الأرض رب العرش الكريم لا إله إلا الله رب السماوات ورب الأرض رب العرش الكريم In Sahih Muslim, the narration that I just mentioned uh, just has that dua but in another authentic narration in Musnad Ahmad it has this dua that I just mentioned, and then it said one should follow it by his own personal dua. Meaning, you just say what I just said, and then make your own personal dua. Like, a, make that like an introduction, and then begin with your dua. And another one, another dua that uh, I, I uh, just remembered that for, for those in distress. Uh, that the Prophet ﷺ, in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, it's authentic, عن أنس رضي الله عنه, أنه كان إذا حزبه أمر, when the Prophet ﷺ, and it's the same word uh, that I used, uh, faced with anything, he used to say, يا حيو يا قيوم برحمتك أستغيث. يا حيو يا قيوم برحمتك أستغيث. يا حيو يا قيوم برحمتك أستغيث. Now, how does this tie into our class? How does this tie to our class? I don't want you to feel that we went off track because these classes are focused uh, to the point. What we're studying here is isti'ana, if you remember. We said there's forms of isti'ana, and we mentioned six of them. In the sixth one, we said is seek and help in deeds. Isti'ana in deeds. Isti'ana in deeds to get, of course, Allah's help. So the example we mentioned of dua, I mentioned two dua uh, in, in those hadith, uh, is seeking isti'ana in dua. Those are examples of that. The salah of the distress is an example. Sabr is an example of that. So there are examples of the sixth category or form of isti'ana. 